Star by Lucian Meyer. She squinted, trying to wash the haze of alcohol out of her system, but it was no use. The car swerved more and more. The high-end car swerved badly, and she overcorrected and launched the car into a telephone pole. She sat stunned in the seat, and soon she heard the sirens approach. The next few weeks were horrible. The tabloids went nuts, surrounding her court appearance like they were covering a war. She did her best to be strong, but she was confused and scared. The judge finally gave his decision. She was to be let go on bail, but put on probation. It was her first major offense, and her status as a superstar had helped her avoid stronger punishment. Her agent, lawyer, and mother all acting like she had done nothing wrong. Laura had never had a normal life. That was easy to see. When she was five, her mother had pushed her into doing some commercials. Quickly after the chocolate milk advertisement had run, the phone began to ring. By the time she was 14, she had six major motion pictures under her belt. The modest start of her life in Michigan, now only a distant memory. She tried her best to be a good student, but soon realized it didn't matter if she studied. Her position as a movie star had ensured she would get good grades. She had become used to being privileged. By the time she was 18, she had shifted into her life as a Hollywood superstar, living in the fast lane, never slowing down, parties and clubs every night. She avoided home like the plague, her mother always hounding her to make money and keeping up her public appearance. The rest of the world thought she was living a fairy tale, but in truth she lived a nightmare every day. Laura realized her life was out of control, but she had no idea how to put herself back on track, and no one around her seemed to want her to, until... Her agent sent over a script saying things like, You must see this, and you'll want to be in this project. Her agent had been right. She wanted in on the project. However, the negotiations did not go well. He walked in with a swagger and a crooked smile. He sat down at the table without a word. Her agent introduced them. He shook her hand and gave her a smile which sent a shiver down her spine. He jumped right in. I would love to have Laura in the movie, but I won't pay the rate you're asking for, he said. Well, that's Laura's normal rate. She's been getting ten million a movie for her last three movies, her agent defended. Well, that may be true. To be honest, I really don't care. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He turned and looked at Laura. I'm willing to offer five hundred thousand, and he let the statement hang in the air. That is ridiculous, the agent almost screamed. No, it's what we are willing to offer. If you're not interested, I'm sure you can find another project that's willing to bathe you in money. But that's not what I'm here for, he said straight to Laura, again ignoring the agent. He smiled at her and the shiver went through her again. He stood up from the table. I hope to have you in the movie, he said and then exited the office and was gone. Laura's agent sat flabbergasted. They talked for a bit and Laura went home. She went out that night and tried to party, but Barry, the director's smile, was in her head. He had set it straight, no Hollywood bullshit. He had a job and he'd offered it to her, no bones about it, and she admired him more than she even knew. She called her agent the next morning. I'm so sorry I called you in for that meeting. I should have made sure he was for real before I ever calling you. I'm looking at a new script for you, and they're willing to pay your normal rate. The agent spit out as fast as she could. No, I want to do the project with Barry, Laura said. What? Laura, sweetie, you're worth so much more than that, the agent said, confused. Yeah, maybe, but I don't care. I'm going to do it, Laura said firmly. She had sat up all night thinking about how she would have to fight. And she did. For two weeks, she fought with her agent and mostly her mother. They gave her all sorts of reasons why she should turn down the project, but for the first time in her life, Laura held to her guns and blocked out everything they said. When she boarded the plane to the shoot location, she felt as if she'd won a battle. She closed her eyes as the plane lifted off and did not wake up until they touched down. She walked out of the gate, and much to her surprise, there stood Barry to pick her up. He smiled as she walked up, and the shiver went through her spine again. She had made the right choice. She felt it deep inside. He loaded her bags into the SUV and they started the hour drive to the shoot location. 
She smiled as he drove. Why didn't you send a driver for me? Laura asked. Eh, I had the time and the drive is a good way to clear my thoughts. Anyway, everyone on the set is a total stress ball. Little Hollywood money and everyone thinks they own you, he said with a knowing smile. Why did you wind up taking the project, he asked. Your agent's still not happy about it. Laura laughed. You think she's bad, you should hear my mom. She paused and looked out the window. She's really pissed you banned her from the set, she said. She tried to sound strong, but in truth, when he had told her agent that Laura's mother would not be allowed on set, she had wanted to be part of the movie even more. Well, she'll get over it, he said with a big cheesy grin on his face. I'm glad you came, he said, but I still wonder why. You treated me normal. I have not had anyone do that. Ever. Everyone freaks out when I'm around, and you just walked in and said your piece. After reading the script, I knew I wanted to play Jenny, and when I met you, I knew I needed to work with you, Laura said. He smiled. Good. I wrote the part for you, so I was glad when you accepted, he said. You did? Laura asked. You never said that in the meeting, she asked. No. If you could not see you playing this part, then there's no point in chasing you for it, he said. But I was your first choice, she asked. You were my only choice. We didn't approach anyone else for the part, he replied. But what if I would have said no, she asked, confused. Then I would not be making this movie. I have a few others up my sleeve, you know, he replied with a smile. You would have not made this movie, and yet you offered such a low amount, she said, still confused. I knew you'd do it, he said. How? she asked. He smiled and pointed to his heart. They arrived at the remote set a little over an hour later. She settled in, and the next day began shooting. When she walked on set, everyone had started to treat her like a superstar. Barry saw it and stopped the shoot. He called the entire crew over. All right. We're all very happy to have Laura here, but we have a lot of shooting to do, so I don't have time for you to all kiss her butt every time she walks on set. So get it all out now. We'll break for lunch, but when you come back, she's an equal member of this crew, he said sternly. The crew stood with mouths agape for a moment. On this set, all that matters is the movie. Go, have a good lunch, but be ready to work when you come back, Barry said and walked off. Laura smiled after him, amazed yet again at his level head. She wanted to tell him thanks, but the rest of the crew walked her to the eating area. They sat on picnic benches and ate lunch prepared by a nice older lady that made sure everyone had what they wanted. When they returned after lunch, they worked. Barry worked them hard, but he also pushed each and every one of them to do their best. The emotion he was able to pull from the actors and even Laura herself was amazing. When they broke for dinner, Barry joined them at the tables. The nice lady made sure that everyone again had the food they wanted, and then she brought Barry a sandwich and kissed him on the forehead. Thanks, Mom, he said, with nothing but love in his eyes for her. Laura noticed it and made a note in her head to ask about her to Barry. They filmed some more scenes after dinner. It was ten o'clock when she finally made her way back to the trailer. Not two minutes after she sat down, there was a knock at the door. She opened the door, and Barry stood there with a goofy grin on his face. Hey, can I come in? he asked. Sure, she said. She was happy to see him, even though she was tired. He came in and sat down. I wanted to stop by and say that I meant no offense what I said before lunch. Oh, none taken, she said. It's so refreshing. I feel like everyone here is already starting to treat me normal. I can't tell you how much that means to me, Barry, she said. Must be strange to be you, he pondered. Well, it won't take long for you to be in the same boat, she said. She had watched his other two movies, and she was sure he would become one of the best directors in Hollywood. I don't know, Barry said with a sly smile. I have to ask, why in the world would you let your mom cater the movie, she asked. He laughed. Not my choice. She wouldn't have it any other way, he smiled. Anyway, I don't know anyone that makes better food, Barry replied. Yeah, but, I mean, you must have enough money that she could just hang out, Laura said, thinking of her own mother, who had lived off her for years now. He again laughed. My mom would never let me do that. I had to force her to take the car I bought her after my first movie. Dad left when I was young, and she's worked ever since. 
Anyway, everyone loves her, and she loves the work. Wow. Again, he had blown her away with his down-to-earth ways. She must be very proud of you, Laura replied. Fuck that. I'm proud of her. I've never met anyone as strong as she is. If I did not have her, I wouldn't be anything, Barry said very honestly. They spent three hours talking. He opened up to her and told his whole story, how he and his mother had scraped by, how she had made sure he had gone to school. It was easy to see that Barry admired her above anyone else. When he got up and left, she felt as if she owed him. He had been so open with his life, and she had told him nothing about her. She tried to tell him as much, but it all came out jumbled up. Again, to his credit, though, he understood. Don't worry. There'll be more conversations. I'm glad to have you as a friend, Laura, he said and walked off into the night. She laid down in her bed, a smile playing on her lips. For the first time in her life, she felt as if she had a true friend, a person that didn't see all the hype, just her. She slept more peaceful than she had in years. The shoot continued for two more days, and then they broke for the weekend. Barry had explained that he always gave a couple days off, so he could get the best work from everyone. He gathered the crew again before they took off. Thanks, guys. You all did a great job, and I really appreciate it. I can't tell you how excited I am about the footage we got. Now go rest up and be back here Monday, Barry said. And they all went in their own directions. As she walked back to her trailer, she was thinking she would maybe read for her time off. The thought of flying home passed through her head, but only for a second. She would rather stay on the set. As she walked, Barry's mother walked up to her. Hello, Laura, she said. Oh, hello, Laura replied. And what big plans do you have for the weekend, Barry's mother asked. Oh, I think I might just hang out and read a little, Laura replied. No, she said matter of fact. Go pack your bag for a couple of days and I will come pick you up in a few minutes, she said and hurried off. Laura stood confused, but she shrugged her shoulders and walked into the trailer and put together a small bag of clothes. As soon as she pulled the zipper closed, a knock came at the door. When she opened it, there stood Barry's mom with a wonderful smile on her face. Ready? she asked. Yeah, I guess. Where are we going? she asked. Home, Barry's mom responded. They drove for a little less than an hour and pulled into a nice home. They walked inside and Barry's mother, Janice, she had learned her name on the drive, set her up in the guest room. Well, I better make some dinner. Want to help? Janice asked. Sure, Laura said. They both walked into the kitchen, and soon wonderful smells began to fill the house. She heard a motorcycle pull up into the driveway, and a moment later, the front door opened. Mom, I'm home, Barry barked. Take off those nasty boots, she yelled back from the kitchen. He walked in a few seconds later, in socks, one of which had a hole in it. His big toe stuck out. Laura broke out laughing. I know, he makes three movies, and he still won't buy himself decent socks. Drives me nuts, Janice said, walking to him and giving him a hug. Oh, I didn't know you were coming, Barry said to Laura. Well, I'm not going to have her sit on the set all weekend. We can't treat our star that way, Janice said with a chuckle. So you put her to work cooking, Barry asked. Well, yes, she can still pull her weight, she replied. Oh, believe me, I don't mind. This is wonderful, Laura affirmed. They sat down at the table and ate the meal. They joked and laughed the whole way through. And after dinner, they all hung out on the back deck and watched the sun settle into the horizon. The weekend was one of Laura's best in her life. Being around Barry's mom, she began to realize why Barry was who he was. She was full of love but taught him to work hard. On Sunday afternoon, Barry came out onto the deck where Laura was reading a book. Want to go for a ride? he asked. I'll even let you pick the bike. She smiled and got up. They met in the garage a few moments later. There were four perfect motorcycles in the garage. She walked straight over to a smaller cafe-style bike. This one, she said. Um, Laura, that one doesn't have a back seat, he said. Where are you going to sit, he asked. A large smile grew on her lips. Your question should be, where are you going to sit? she said, straddling the bike. Do you know how to ride? 
he asked. She started the bike and shot out into the driveway. She looked back and smiled through the helmet. Coming? she asked. He quickly put on his helmet and jumped onto a bike and followed her out. They rode for about an hour and then pulled off at a small diner. They walked in and immediately they were both recognized. But they obviously knew Barry, so they left him somewhat alone. Although they never heard the fight between the waitresses in the back on who would get to serve them. Barry smiled. This is the diner my mom used to work at. The burgers are awesome. Apparently the fight was settled because soon a waitress came up to take their order. So where did you learn to ride? Barry asked as they waited for the food to come out. My ex-boyfriend taught me. About the only nice thing he ever did for me, Laura said. Well, I must say, I'm impressed, Barry said. Soon, two large plates with burgers and fries were brought out. Laura hesitated, her mother's voice in her head. You can't eat that, honey. You have to stay thin. Barry saw her thoughts. Jesus, girl, you're skinny enough. Eat, he smiled. She smiled back and tore in. Thirty minutes later, she stared at the empty plate, not believing she had ate at all. She wore a big smile and sat back in the booth, letting the food settle. Told you it was a damn good burger, Barry said with a chuckle. You have no idea, she replied. They spent some time talking and then rode to the house. The next morning, Janice brought Laura back to the set. Barry had already gone in hours before. She arrived and began filming. And so it went for four more weeks. They worked and filmed hard in the week, and the weekends were spent at Barry and Janice's home, cooking, reading, and talking. Laura's perspective had changed, and as the final shoot closed, Laura began to cry. She did not want to leave the set. Everyone said tearful goodbyes, and Laura returned to her trailer. She cried freely as she packed her bag to go home. She brought her suitcases out, and there sat Barry outside her trailer. He leaned against his bike, and next to it was parked the bike she had ridden over the last few weekends. Want to ride home? he asked with a smile. A smile grew on her lips. Hell yes, she replied. They made arrangements for her bags to be shipped back to L.A. She made a call to her mom that she would be home in a few days. She didn't even give her a second to respond, and then they hit the road. They rode for two days and wound up at a small motel overlooking the ocean. They could have completed the ride, but both of them wanted just a little bit more time with each other. There was a deep connection between them, although it had not blossomed into passion. They sat on the balcony of the room watching the ocean roll in and out. She finally told him her whole story. He sat and listened and never interrupted her. She finished with the story of her car crash. Well, I guess you learned your lesson then, huh? He said, smiling. Everyone fucks up, Laura. The problem is, is that everyone watches you. Don't worry about it too much. Learn the lessons you need and then move on. Let them mire themselves in it, Barry advised. Yeah, just wish I could fade away sometimes. Be normal, you know? Laura said. Um, you are normal. Don't you get that? You're a normal girl thrown into this surreal situation. But you're just like anyone else and reacting to the situation. And you're gonna make mistakes, too, just like a normal person would, Barry replied. She had never looked at it that way, and it brought her an immense amount of comfort immediately. She settled into her seat more comfortable than she'd been in years. Laura, you are special, but not because you were in a few movies. It's because what's in here, he pointed to her heart. He leaned in and gave her a light kiss on the lips. He broke and turned, quickly turning bright red. She smiled. That was nice, she said. They talked, but he made no more moves on her. In the morning, they finished up their ride to L.A., and they pulled up to her house. Holy house, Barry said, looking at her mansion. Yeah, but I think I like yours better, Laura said. Well, I'm sure it has enough garage space to hold your new bike, Barry said. I can't take it, Barry, she replied. Yes, you can. Hell, according to your agent, I still owe you nine million dollars, Barry said. She laughed. Nine million five hundred thousand, she corrected with a chuckle. Just promise me you won't drink and ride, he said with a wink. When will we see each other again, she asked. 
Oh, don't even worry about that. Our paths are intertwined. He gave her a long kiss and put on his helmet and rode out of the gate and down the street. She smiled after him. She felt stronger than she ever had before. She walked into her house, but it was different. No, she was different. The next few months, she only spoke to Barry here and there, never for very long, but they were both very busy. He was getting the movie ready, and she was straightening out her life no longer letting her mother take any role for her. In fact, after many arguments, she bought a smaller house in the valley and moved out of the mansion, leaving her mom there. They still spoke, but Laura would no longer allow her any power in her life. She treated the fans and paparazzi different as well, no longer trying to hide from them, but understanding that her place in the world meant that she would have to deal with the good and the bad of the job. She went to a club here and there, but she had learned moderation. No longer trying to solve her problems with drugs and alcohol, she was able to enjoy her life much more. The media even took notice of her life changed and eased up on her a little bit. With no train wreck to follow, there wasn't much to talk about. She sat in a meeting with her agent, her mother absent, for the first time. You look happy, sweetie, her agent said. I am, Laura said with a smile. I'm glad to hear it. Well, I have a few scripts for you to read. She passed three over to her. Laura glanced at them. On one, the cover said, The Star by Barry Fields. She smiled and set it at the top of the stack. Why did I know you'd look at that one first? Her agent said with a smile. Laura only answered with a shy smile. Well, they will give you something to do when you're on your press junket. They talked through the meeting, and even her agent was impressed by how proactive Laura had become. Laura went off to do the talk show circuit, and after she arrived back in L.A., she was excited. The next day would be the premiere, but more exciting, she would get to see Barry again. It seemed like forever, but the premiere finally arrived, and she walked out of her house to get into the limo. And there was Barry at her driveway on his bike. You going in that thing? He yelled up at her. Give me a minute she said and ran inside and swapped her clothes into a jeans and a shirt. She grabbed a leather jacket and opened the garage. She pulled the bike out into the driveway. I won't be needing a ride, she said to the driver. He shrugged and drove away. She pulled out next to Barry. It's so great to see you, she said and gave him a quick kiss. Let's go, Barry said with a big smile. They rode to the premiere together and they walked the red carpet in their jeans. She had never felt more at home. They sat next to Janice in the theater, and everyone loved the movie. But the best compliment of all was Janice. She cried at the end and looked over at Laura and gave a big smile and placed a loving hand on her son's hand. Barry was also in tears. He leaned over. You were perfect, he said to her. In the next few weeks, the film premiered all over. She was held as it being her best performance to date. Both Laura and Barry were invited to a large talk show. When the host asked if she would be working with Barry again, she smiled. We start filming next month, she replied. Laura was never mired by her old ways again. Her and Barry became more and more to each other, and in a few years they were married. She became a huge inspiration to many young actors and actresses. They sat one night after getting the kids to bed on their back deck. Who would have ever thought? Barry said with a smile, raising his glass to her. I did, the moment I met you. She said and gave him a kiss.